Welcome everyone. My name is Kelsey Brannon. I am the Director of Radio at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and WSUM Madison Student Radio. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, WSUM's 20th anniversary is tomorrow. It's a big milestone for us, especially in college radio, and we're really proud to celebrate with a series of workshops led by station alumni. Before we get into this workshop, I want to take a minute to reflect on a loss that the WSUM community suffered last week. Uh, WSUM's co-founder and first general manager Dave Black passed away last weekend. Dave was absolutely integral to the station's launch, exponential growth, and subsequent success. Over 2,000 alumni have passed through the station, and Dave left an impression on each and every one of them. Um, many of us credit our entire careers to Dave, myself included. Over the last couple of days, days, I have spoken a lot with students and alumni about whether or not these workshops should continue in light of that news, and the consensus was that it seemed right to move forward with these because Dave was relentlessly devoted to providing educational opportunities to students and community members alike, and we believe that he would want this particular show to go on. So before I introduce the speakers for tonight's workshop, I would like for us to hold a moment of silence in Dave's memory. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. More information about Dave Black and his legacy can be found at WSUM.org. We will turn our attention now to this evening's workshop, which is about the ins and outs of the music industry. I'm pleased to introduce Bruce Ravid, Zach Stafford, and Jesha Tishner. Bruce joins us from Los Angeles. He is a former a &R exec for Capitol Records, where he spent 10 years. He was instrumental in the development of such artists as The Knack, Iron Maiden, Duran Duran, and Weird Al Yankovic. He was also the a &R guy for Kraftwerk and The Undertones. Bruce is a consultant to the music and entertainment industries and provides creative input for up and coming artists worldwide. Zach Stafford handles commercial marketing and project management for New York based independent record labels, Mexican Summer, Anthology, Software, and Kamado Records. He got his start in the music industry working in record stores, college radio, and event booking. Zach worked as a traffic and music director at WSUM from 2013 to 2014. Jesha Tishner is a WSUM DJ or was a WSUM DJ from 2014 to 2017 and currently works for Warner Music Group as a coordinator in digital products. She handles digital distribution for independent labels such as Sub Pop, Polyvinyl, and Partisan Records. Previously, Jesha was an intern at a creative entertainment agency, worked at several live music venues, and was a PA for a variety of, of events and music videos. Jesha is currently continuing continuing her education at UCLA Extension. Bruce, Zach, and Jesha, thank you so much for being here. I will let the three of you take it away. Who wants, to, who wants to go first? We're going to talk a little bit about how we got into this business. Yeah, yeah, I think that maybe we could, you know, each of us uh, go a little bit deeper into our backgrounds and maybe how we got into music uh, industry world and, and, you know, kind of let things been out from there. Sure. You might as well start it off, Zach. Okay. Um, cool. Thanks for having me, Kelsey. And hey, everyone at WSUM, you are in the, the best college radio station in the country, in my opinion. Um, I, like Kelsey mentioned, was there from 20 to 2013 to 2014 on staff, but I started DJing there as soon as I got to campus in 2012 and was had a show or multiple shows, I guess, like throughout uh, the three years that I was there. So very uh, lucky that I was able to able to get in at such a great station. Um, and I guess, you know, just for starters, people, you know, I, when, when people ask me like, where, where'd you get your start? How'd you get started? What, if I want to, you know, find a way into working in music, what do you do? And I think that you're all in the, you know, perfect place uh, as, as 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 it pertains to like jumping in i mean i i very much got my first like 
glance at the music industry is through working at WSUM and through DJing there for sure. Um, but I guess, you know, like Kelsey mentioned in the, the short intro there, I was also working in record stores. I worked at Strictly Discs there in Madison for a handful of years. Um, I worked at a record store, a couple of record stores in Minneapolis where I grew up. Um, and then, uh, you know, when I was at UW, I was also on the, the Wood Music um, booking committee. So helping to book the shows at, at the unions, which was great experience too, just seeing kind of the, the live music side of things through that. Um, and, you know, yeah, outside of that, just being like a, a music fan, I was kind of just tuned in and buying records and keeping my eye on music stuff all the time. So that, you know, I guess to speak to where I got started, it was very much like just the combination of those places all, you know, led me to where I am now, I think. Um, yeah, maybe I'll pass it to Bruce if you wanna talk about like your first, you know, your first uh, music jobs. Yeah, well, I like to tell people, I still do tell people, and I, when I was a student, I used to say the same thing. My major, like a lot of people probably on this call, my major, college radio. Right. And then I minored in, in, in the business school of business. And I happen to have been music director for three years at a predecessor of WSUM. And little did I know that was going to lead to a career opportunity that I was not anticipating. Right. Because anybody who's music director tends to get to know the labels. Right, Zach. And uh, basically, Capitol Records called me as I was well into my senior year and said, we have a new position. R record companies used to have a lot more people in radio promotion than they do now. And they were looking for a second guy in Chicago, a junior guy. Would I wanna come down and interview? Okay, so I went down, I interviewed, they hired me. So here I was turning 22 and getting paid to come back to Madison and take radio people to lunch and dinner. Right. It was just an incredible experience. I spent five years in various positions within Capital in the Midwest promoting to radio stations. I loved that job. It was, it was a burnout, but it was, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I still do love radio people you know, of everywhere. And then I got to uh, L.A. because they brought me into A&R. And I had my experiences in A&R that, that Kelsey referred to. I got to work with some amazing bands and I actually preferred promotion. Actually, I thought they were both a lot of work, a lot of work, but I wouldn't trade those A&R years for anything. And I took a few years off at that point because I was, I was burnt out. Uh, when you're in A&R and a lot of people want to get into A&R, it's like having two jobs because you've got all your daytime stuff. You have to look over and look after all your bands. And then at night, you're, you're, always, you're somewhere almost every night of the week. Now it's changed a little bit because so much more is online. But at any rate, I got to a point where obviously the blood needed to start flowing again. And I was doing a real informal version of a podcast. I was sending out a, a, what I called a newsletter. It was really like a little blog. I was picking new music that I thought radio people should be aware of. And I got lucky, I, I real early on, bands like Muse and Arcade Fire, and I just really blew up bands that I loved. And I thought, maybe I should get deeper into this. And then Dave Black actually had an impact on me as a more of a grizzled music business veteran, right? We started doing marathons during student breaks, or since I used the name Bruce Rave on the air, we called them rave -athons. And I would come back and we'd do eight hours, right? And, and that led, to my starting a weekly radio show, which is now on a station out here, KXFM. I expand it and customize it. WSUM runs a three hour version of that on Monday mornings. And as Kelsey mentioned, I'm an artist management. I, I, I work with a band called Trapdoor Social that have played in Madison a few times, High Noon a few years ago, last time they came through. And uh, you know they're basically indie rock slash alternative. I work with international artists from around the world, helping them creatively, helping them gear themselves to the United States market. And I uh, also work pretty closely. I, I have a lot of friends and contacts in the alternative, the commercial alternative market, your WLUMs, your WKQXs, uh, stations like that, as well as people 
on the non-commercial side. And the energy in radio, I think, in terms of the positive energy for this kind of music, as Kelsey knows, because she worked at two of the iconic stations, Seattle and Minneapolis. The current up in Minneapolis is great. So at any rate, you know, that's that's my story. And I want to thank Kelsey. I'm, I'm just like Zach and everybody else. I'm just really glad to be here. Hi, I'm Jesha. Um, I'm from Madison originally and then went to UW. Um, I did WSUM my time there and wood music like Zach. And also I worked at the Orpheum. Um, and before that, I didn't really know what a music career looked like if you weren't an artist. Um, so both of those gave me a lot of insight and WSUM was just so fun getting to play music I loved all the time and like having people call in and be like, I love this, whatever. That was so fun. And I hope to one day have a radio show again. Um, but yeah, after I graduated in 2017, I moved out to LA because I was like, I know I want to work in music. I love LA. I'd only visited once before, but I loved it. And so I moved out here really not knowing anyone. I had like one friend um, and the first two years were really hard. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's you have to put in the work. I feel like if you want to move to somewhere completely new where you don't know anyone and it's obviously not like college where you like get placed roommate right away and, you know, have your classes with friends. So my first few months here, I was like working in this punk rock clothing store on Melrose. That was like the wow. most toxic environment of my life. Um, got out of there pretty quick, started nannying, um, which I loved doing. And while I, I did that for three and a half years. And while I did that, I was also doing all the other things Kelsey mentioned. So um, I work at a few music venues around here. I still do that for fun sometimes mainly. So I can just like go to all the shows I want. Um, but also I've worked a lot of cool immersive experiences and my top three ones were listed also in my little um, description, but I worked the Billie Eilish album release immersive experience, which was so crazy. And like seeing her show up in this like full Louis Vuitton mask thing before quarantine. So masks weren't even a thing. It was like so cool and then also working like camp flogna and i did immersive experience there for turnstile which is there it was like basically you could go in and take photos and watch videos of them i don't know how to explain that but it's cool because again i got to go backstage and see all these cool people like tyler the creator dave grohl like it blew my mind because i was still like very new here and in wisconsin like obviously you never see celebrities so that was so crazy. And then um, other music festivals, like Adult Swim Music Festival, music videos. Um, but then I started taking classes at UCLA because I wanted to, um, I guess, just further what I actually wanted to do, was, which was more of the business side. So, um, yeah, I just started taking classes. It was in the middle of COVID. I wasn't doing much except nannying and that was a lot. So taking the classes was really nice and talking to other people who wanted to do what I wanted to do. And also having a lot of guest speakers really helped um, because I found out quickly one of the only ways you can get an interview at like some of these bigger companies is if you know someone. Networking is so huge especially in LA. I'm not sure about New York. It's probably similar. Um, but most, most of my time before I had, when I was nannying and doing these side gigs, like it was spent networking and like, I love going to shows. I went to shows all the time before now, not so much just with COVID. Um, but so yeah, in a, a guest lecture came to one of our classes and he worked at Warner Music Group in streaming and there's so many jobs I just didn't even know existed um before this in digital music um so we just kept in touch he was like like how excited I was and how 
nice I was, I don't know, just being a good person. And he wanted to help me. So he tried sending my email to, or my resume to a few people when, cause basically at these companies, what they do is they send an email around to everyone they know. And they're like, Hey, do you know anyone who could be good for this position? Like I want someone, whatever, ASAP, whatever. So basically one day I got an email from my current boss at Warner and she was like, hi, I got your email from Ben. Like, would you like to interview for this? And I was like, sure. And it was a job. I had no idea what it was, but as Kelsey said, I'm a coordinator in digital distribution. So basically I like package and ship all the music to um, all the streaming services. So it's a lot of metadata um, a lot of music, a lot of album art, a lot of keeping track of information, but it is really cool because I get to talk to all these people at these labels that I love. So it's a great job and it's a stepping stone towards what I want to do, which is um, music supervision or music sync. So putting music in TV and shows. And that's why I'm still taking classes because I don't know much about it, but that's what I want to do. And I love working at Warner. It's a great place to work. And um, now it'd be awesome if we could answer questions from you guys, because there's so many things I wanted to know in college that I just, I had no idea until I came out here and started doing things. So I'm really excited. And my number one suggestion is network as much as you can. Send yes to us send emails to bands you like send emails to people who've worked on albums or shows or anything you've liked that is so huge especially if you want to be in the music industry yeah before we go to questions I just want to jump in because I realized that I only talked about what I did before I actually got you know my first kind of real music industry job and I think Jesha what you were saying before about like who you know, like, and, you know, that really being like the entry point. Sadly, that is true. But I, I mean, at the same time, I'll say that, like, if it weren't for, at least on my end, if it weren't for, like, having experience at WSUM and kind of seeing what that looked like and having experience working at record stores or event booking, all of that stuff, like, very much kind of helped lead up to the point where I, my story was I, had a, a friend of a friend who worked at Mexican Summer, the label where I work now, who mentioned that uh, we we had been hanging out with a mutual friend. She mentioned there was a job opening and I was just planning to move to New York already and mentioned that I was interested. And from there, it kind of just like snowballed. And I ended up with this job. The first job title I had there, I think was like commercial marketing coordinator or something like that. But what I was doing was working with um, both on the digital side, like you, Jesha, um, with with all the DSPs, Spotify, Apple, you know, all of those guys to kind of pitch all of the, the music from the record label um, that the record label is putting out. But then also working with um, our distributor, who was uh, Caroline, which is Virgin now. Um, in the Capitol building where Bruce used to be, I'm sure. Um, and uh, and then also working with record stores. So my kind of my my shoe in there was having the experience working at shops, seeing what the kind of, you know, in-store marketing and, and all kinds of things looked like um, on the shop side was what really helped me when I started working in this position. So yeah, um, basically on, on that side, I started out just like, um, do it coming up with like retail marketing plans and you know when an album comes out like how do you how do you engage like indie record stores around the country by you know through doing listening parties or through doing ticket giveaways or you know all kinds of stuff like that so that's kind of where I got started and now I do still handle that stuff to some extent um, but I'm also my my newer title now is project manager and so that's whenever we have a new record coming out, I'm working on hiring our entire team from press to radio, to digital marketing, to you know coordinating with the artists, basically to oversee all of the like individual elements of an album release campaign to make sure that it goes off uh, you know, as well as it can. Um, on top of that, also working with like our physical production person to, to make different 
color, uh, different like vinyl colorways and, you know, different formats and all things like that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, I guess in, in summary, that's where I'm at now, but I think, yeah, Jesha, like you were saying, I think the best thing that we could do now is like open it up to questions and see what you guys are curious about because, um, yeah, I just remember like when I started working at WSUM, I had so many questions about the in music industry and like how and where to go. And I don't know, maybe, maybe that's where you're at now. So I guess we can open it up. If we're waiting for a question, I'll throw in one thing. I that uh, actually Jesha mentioned this, but it, it's it's worth accenting, and I bet you Zach would say the same thing about New York. It's really important to give it time because the social interaction in LA and New York is so different from the Midwest. <laughs> it's competitive. People aren't as they're not as friendly. They don't smile as much. Now, having said that, I really enjoy living in Los Angeles, but and I, I, Capital brought me out here. I didn't have to knock on doors. Knocking on doors is brutal. And it's really important for people who move to a city like in LA or New York to give it 18 months, maybe two years. Get that circle of friends around you. Because once you have that circle of friends, the real friends, then the bullshit kind of bounces off of you in a, in a very positive way, right? Be, because you've already got a little bit of a support network. And um, I think that uh, basically that's some of the best advice we, we can give. And also, I, I think it's safe to say that there are a lot of WSUM people who love to help other people from the radio station. So if you are contemplating a move out to a, a major market like this, you know, consider networking with any of us or, or just through other people, you know, from the station to connect with people in these cities, to get some ideas on neighborhoods, what to expect. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I moved to New York and I, I got very lucky and like had this job before I moved out there. But I mean, even still, I think it's totally true. Like the first year moving to, a, you know, New York or LA or wherever it's it's intense um, and takes some serious acclimating and I think part of like part of whatever working in music too is like you 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 meet a lot of people you know you meet if you're going to shows if you're involved in music at all you eventually you know I, I know several people who moved to New York or LA without who wanted to work in music and just through like proximity and 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 meeting people and you know just kind of being open um ended up working at record labels or or working for distribution companies or um you know there's there's so many ways that you can go like i i don't know if we want to speak on that at all but there's so many different little pockets in the music industry worth explore or that you can explore that um and there's you know I, there, there really are always job openings that's something that i didn't know when i was first looking um, and I can I can share a couple of resources I know of with you Kelsey after this if you wanted to forward them on to to students just to see like what what kind of jobs there are you know I think that's really I wish I had known like earlier on what what kind of jobs there were because I remember coming <laughs> graduating and thinking okay the only music industry job for me is like working in radio promotion because those are the only people that I was interacting with as music director at WSUM, mm -hmm. but there's, there's so much you can do. And especially now, you know, um, so yeah, I would, I would say uh, one piece of advice is just like start looking at the job boards, you know, see what's out there, I think is a really good um, kind of starting point just to see, yeah, what, what there is. I don't know. Yeah. Also um, LinkedIn is a really good source, honestly, just to add, like anyone like us who've like done w WSUM and we're doing something that you would like to do now or work at a place you'd like to now, um, it's really great to reach out and just have that little connection and be like, hi, I'm a student at UW, I do WSUM, like I'm looking to get into this business, could we have a chat? And one thing I found out very quickly is that people want to help other people in this industry like we want 
new proactive smart people in this industry we don't want to gatekeep it at all at least in my i've had a pretty good experience in that way and um i think like one of you mentioned like getting over that hurdle of like cold calls or just like reaching out to random people you'll find out quickly like there are a lot of people who want to help you even though you don't know them and I, getting over that fear is very important in this industry actually not only station people but just uw people in general wisconsin badgers love to help wisconsin badgers yeah, yeah, these are these are all such good points. I'm going to jump in and warm up some of the the Q and A part here. I think Zach and Jessa, you both brought up really good points about um, there are so many different corners of the music industry to get involved in, and so many different types of people to to reach out to. I'm wondering if we can kind of demystify those different corners of the music industry. I know, you know, when I was looking to get involved in the industry and I was still in college, I didn't have a great um, understanding of the difference between a label and a promoter and a distributor and a booking agent and like all that sort of stuff. Can we kind of put some shared vocabulary around those things so the folks in the room kind of know the different career paths that are available? That's a great point. Yeah. I mean, it. There, I sometimes forget that it's like a very kind of jargony industry and, you know, without knowing kind of what all those corners are it can be hard to really understand i can i can spell some of it out um and then bruce or jesha if you want to jump in um so i can speak to the record label side. a record label is basically the an artist uh will will sign with a record label and then the record label will um will both on the physical side make you know cds or or lps or you know, tapes or whatever, uh, and then sell those through a distributor like where Jesha works. Um, but then they'll also handle the digital distribution. So that's, you know, obviously the the bigger part, especially on the major side now is like uh, handling the delivery of all of the all of the audio and, and art and, and everything to Spotify, Apple, uh, Tidal, etc. Um, and and yes, yeah. our the DSPs, because you mentioned that as well, Zach, and that's something I deal with every day is I send, you know, these digital products to DSPs. I don't even know what that specifically stands for, but it's the accounts like Spotify, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, like sending all the music there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so the, the record label will also do everything from, like I was saying before, um, we'll, we'll hire press teams for the artist. It, and there's another, it really depends on if the artist has like their own management. Sometimes we work with artists that don't have managers that they hire and we will, um, we will very much kind of serve in more of a management role where we're hiring the press team, hiring, you know, working with them on all of their like creative direction, working with them on their marketing direction, um, hiring radio sometimes. Um, it, it, we, we kind of work with artists to, to just make sure that their release is kind of as well oiled as possible to make it out into the world and, and do well. So um, that's, you know, I think that's what most labels are are doing now, you know, um, but maybe to speak to like another pocket, um, there's there's also like I was saying, artist management teams are, you know, oftentimes working directly with the artists to to come up with a lot of this stuff, whether that's their, you know, kind of creative direction, marketing direction, um, uh, I don't know, but then there are also now, uh, instead of record labels, there'll be like, artists, uh, what do you call it, label services companies that are just like helping to kind of advise on all of that stuff and play the play the role of, um, of, a, of, of a record label basically, but without producing or without taking like as big of a cut basically from, from the, the release. Um, Bruce, I'm, you've worked in so many zones in the music industry. Maybe you could spell out like A&R or, 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 you know, distribution or wh whatever, you know. Sure, sure. And a and I, I actually mentioned real quick during my initial summary, a and has changed. It isn't so much going out and going to clubs now. It, it's more 
a lot of it is online and, and picking up. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of what ANR has become, uh, for, and right now I'm just talking about the scope of what ANR is as opposed to, to probably how to get into it. And I get asked that question a lot too. So we should talk about that, although there's no easy way. But I think that uh, ANR has become a whole, and this, this gets into what Jess is doing too. This industry has become so metrics driven. So yeah. what's the first thing somebody does when they're checking out a band? What are the oh, streams? So see what kind of Spotify numbers they've got, right? And they are, or the engagement on Instagram and all the other platforms. So a lot of those decisions now go, go into that. Uh, if we're talking about radio, they're looking at that stuff before adding music. Even a cool station like Sirius XMU, you got to have a certain level of buzz to get into rotation there, which is really sad. Um, but a and in, in my case, they asked me to join ANR. I didn't want to get into ANR. The VP came to Chicago. He interviewed me over breakfast, and I told him why I would suck as an ANR man, and he wasn't having it. He said, "Bruce, you can't turn this down. This is too much of a positive career move for you." Plus, I wanted to get out of winter, which everybody on this Zoom can relate to. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I obviously decided to do it, and I, I'm really glad I did. But uh, I don't know if, you know, it's a lot of it is what you guys have already talked about. It's, it's, it's just really getting to know people because if someone's hiring for a and they, they've got to have trust in the fact they got to like the way somebody evaluates music and, you know, with their ears and their, their minds, their hearts, they also have to have a good sense that the person's going to work really hard and be really dedicated and, uh, you know, I think that, you know, an A&R is a lot, every label handles it a little bit differently, but it's not just signing bands. A lot of it is taking care of the bands you've got, because I can tell you, especially at a larger label, such as what Jessa experiences at Warner Brothers. I mean, you, you know, like Jessa, you work, I mean, both of you guys work with some amazingly cool labels. But just because Fontaine's DC comes out on Partisan, for example, one of my favorite current bands, it doesn't mean that the label is going to get real excited about working them. So a big part of A&R is overseeing everything that's going on and getting the record company excited about, about that particular band. So anybody who wants to get into A&R, these are some of the traits, I think, that, that maybe the A&R VPs, the presidents of A&R, are looking for nowadays. Totally. I can speak to on our side at like an indie label, ANR um, very much looks like uh, we have two, well, let me see. Uh, we have a couple of ANR people. Um, we have someone who's kind of doing all of the, and just I should, because people might be wondering, it, does ANR stand for artists and repertoire? Is that what it stands for? Uh, yeah. Basically, on our side, that looks like the person who's deciding like who to sign, you know, which bands the label is going to sign, and um, and then also like kind of working through the the you know early stages of like the business negotiations and contract negotiations, and kind of you know. On our side, it's it's a lot of working with like figuring out what what is the artist looking for, how can the label help them to achieve what they want to do, and then you know is you know, trying to figure out if it's a good fit basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and our person who does more of the like A and R kind of um, management and coordination is doing a lot of like kind of uh, you know contract development and kind of working working through like the legal. Um, the, the, the legal side of things and making sure that all the whatever contract paperwork is, is good. And, but also, you know, that's also like working with the artists directly to kind of get, get all kinds of stuff together. Like Jesha was mentioning earlier, there's all kinds of like meta now everything is about metadata and making sure that we have like all of the, all of the right, like, whatever DSP profiles and making sure that we have access to their, uh, um, they're like Spotify for artists account and just it's it's all kinds of like nitty-gritty stuff that basically on the label side the indie label side 
it helps us to help the artists um, have like a successful release campaign. Um, and they are like the point of contact at the label, essentially. Yeah, you're essential as an A&R person, you are essentially that ma band's manager on the inside. Right. Um, yeah, good question, good, good point. Uh, Kelsey just mentioned, we should probably open it up uh, to questions because we've just been rambling for a while now. So yeah, are, are there any questions you guys have? Uh, yeah, any questions? And if you wanna put them in the chat too, that's fine. Yeah, that's good too, but there's so much to know and we don't have much time and I would love to share any information that we might have. You know, it'll probably happen as soon as we're finished, people will come up with all these questions. <laughs> Which I'm happy uh, and I, I don't wanna speak for everyone here, but if anyone, if you wanna reach out, if you have questions that you, yeah. you think of after the fact, I'm happy to, Go offline and, and email. Um, I mean, I've I've definitely also since leaving WSUM, I've had people when they're in New York um, get in touch with me and and you know ask to like meet up or come check out our office or you know just talk talk music industry stuff. I'm I'm always open to that kind of thing. And um, if I'm ever in Madison again, which I'm sure will be sometime soon, I can also you know set up meetings or whatever. But yeah, yeah, same with me. Same with me. I think I'm going to be in Madison in April and then definitely uh, for a football game this fall. And uh, or if anybody's in L.A. or if anybody wants to talk more about L.A. Jesha, we, sh we should meet up sometime. Good. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. yeah, there's an event coming up, actually, an alumni event. I'll tell you about it later on email. Yeah, but at any rate, yeah, uh, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, we can make our contact information available to anybody here for sure. Yeah, I would say for sure, email us if you guys are serious about getting into the music industry, especially in our perspective cities. Um, but also I LinkedIn is really great because you can see, oh, do you know someone that works at a company that I know? Or, you know, with Bruce or Zach, it's the same thing. And it's much easier to reach out when you have that one person connection at least I found, and just going off of what Kelsey was saying before, different sections of the music industry. So I don't think anyone really touched on this, but like agency, uh, Wood Music obviously works with agents a lot um, who, you know, book tours, book shows, um, but that is a whole other section I don't really understand it's kind of crazy um but I see it yeah we've got a question from Jack okay perfect oh Jack, you're on mute all right uh is it working now Can you hear me yes it is hey. great uh so I graduated last fall I have a job right now in uh concert production I'm gonna I'm a production coordinator at FPC live and while I really like it here I want to make sure I don't get pigeonholed into one industry like production. I love to keep myself open to like a marketing job or A&R like Bruce, you were talking about. Um, I graduated with, with a strategic communications degree uh, this fall. So how do you not pigeonhole yourself in one area and how do you keep yourself open to all other types of, of jobs? Wow. Um, I, I think that's a, a really good question because my experience in the hiring world is that people do tend to pigeonhole us, right? We pigeonhole artists, right? And, and pigeonhole bands. Every, everything is, is, is kind of that way. I think, it's, uh, I think it might get back to kind of what, uh, you know, everybody here has been talking about is, you know, find people, other things you might want to do, whether it's A&R marketing. Try to find people you know, either through a, a Wisconsin network or, or whatever, and, and, and just try to connect with them. And, 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 and also, you know, deal as much in those kinds of things as you possibly can, even, even doing what you're doing now with it, you know, as a production coordinator. 
uh, if, if that makes sense. Uh, just, just try to be as, as, as widespread, try to network as well as you can. And a lot of this takes time and nobody has enough time. You know, that, that's one of our great challenges in life, right? But, but that's what I would recommend is, is because right place at the right time is our friend. And, and a lot of times it's, it's luck, but we have to make our own luck so that we're, we're in that place. I'll, I'll say one thing. Yeah. I'll say one thing on that too, Bruce, is that, you know, especially on like the indie label side, if it, since I, I work with maybe, I always forget the number. It's like maybe 15 people work at the label I'm at, but um, we, any job, like basically what you're doing now, like it would be great if you had that experience going into like whatever a, a marketing job or like going into Jesha's job or like going into I think one of the things about working in music is like having seeing all sides of of how it works is so important and will ultimately like make you a way more like attractive like candidate or if you've seen like how live works you know for example you're going to be you'd be probably better at my job than I am because you have a much better grasp on like what what tour management or tour marketing or kind of live production looks like and and that can really feed in so like bruce said i think just like keeping your eye out like and 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 applying for jobs or or also you know like it's been said before just like if you ever see anything that is tethered to one of the three of us or 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 kelsey in some way um just like yeah keep, keep keeping like a good network and 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 riding on that, I think, is 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 the most important thing. Keeping your eye open for like job openings all the time is probably the best the best way to like find a new a new route if you're looking. Also, another thing I think that would be great for you to do is kind of think about like where do you want to go? Are there certain companies you want to work at? Like we said, network with those kinds of people, but also look into. I look into classes sometimes if there's like something specific. It's harder with like marketing and AR because that's much, very much like personable. Like, yeah, do you know how to do this? But there's also um, different like guilds or groups of people. So, like for me, as I said, I'm interested in music supervision. There's like a music supervision guild and they do um, Zooms like this a lot where they talk about again like the ins and outs of whatever so it'd be great if you could like you know specify it a little and then try and just network that way and also learn more through those talks one other thing i'll say really quick um there are a handful of um of like music business conferences which are actually super helpful. And I think there are like student rates um, for getting into those. Like the ones that I've gone to for work have been, um, yeah, there's Music Biz, which is in Nashville. And I think a lot of this stuff is now like digital also. Um, the big one in New York is uh, the A2IM Indie Week. A2IM is the American Association of independent music i don't remember what it stands for but um it's like basically all of these indie labels and uh, artist management companies artists distributors all come together and there are sessions that are like you know all all like topical to to very specific um pockets of the music industry and then like spotify will be there and apple will be there and they'll give presentations and those two in particular, I think, uh, are really good, especially if you're trying to look at what's what's available. Great point on the conferences. Uh, absolutely. You know, one of the things, and, and of course, everybody's here for a reason, because because everybody's motivated to, to find that next step. And you know the the best thing I, I i tell people for example if you're involved with the radio station now you might want to get more involved right if you're not if you're a student or even a, a member of the community find something that you love doing and get involved in it now because that helps position you into a role where you're going to be noticed as i was by capitol records when they needed somebody in chicago a junior guy to come in. And I think we've all been in those cases. 
And I'm sure that Zach, everybody, Kelsey, uh, you know, Jesha, Zach, it's amazing how many people around this industry came from college radio. I was gonna I, say, yeah. every interview I've had, it's been because I have college radio, WSUM or Wood Music. And that's always like the first thing people who are interviewing me comment on or I comment on because it is so integral. And even just if you're like, oh, I make a lot of Spotify playlists too, like that's just like a good hobby to have if you wanna be in the music industry and great to talk about. Sure. Yeah. By the way, some other places that people can consider working, you know, they're obviously they're the concert promoters. You guys are talking about that wood music, for example, companies like TikTok, you know, and a lot of us have mixed feelings about TikTok. But one thing is undeniable. TikTok is huge right now in the industry and they do hire. So, you know, my, people might want to consider that or working for a DSP like a Spotify or an Apple Music. I, I see every now and then they've got positions. Uh, there's a website called entertainmentcareers.net that people might want to make a note of. And uh, you, can, you can plug in certain geographical locations. And there may be some things on there that could be of interest as well. And then maybe... Go to LinkedIn. If you see a company you're interested in, let, let's say Warner Brothers or Mexican Summer, right? And, you know, go, go, go on LinkedIn and see who you might already know who's there or who went to the University of Wisconsin. I just dropped a couple of job boards that I find to be the most helpful uh, in the chat. I, A2IM, the job board there is probably the most useful, for, at least in New York. Um, they do LA postings as well but as far as indie indie jobs go um that is a great resource for sure yeah cool. more questions from the audience i see one from alex yeah hi uh can you hear me okay yes excellent okay um thank you for being here it's excellent hearing from you guys thank you for just just yeah telling us about the music industry really appreciate it um i guess the one thing uh question that i i guess had um minus the wsum experience kind of getting you a step into these places that you mentioned how much of your actual school major applied to the position that you guys work now do you want the real answer <laughs> <laughs> i would i would i would i mean i let's see I, uh, I studied, I was in the J school, the school of journalism, and I did the like strategic communications track. And so like, there was some stuff that is maybe applicable, but I also work, most of the people I work with, like, I don't, I don't know, they studied like art history or English or, you know, all kinds of stuff. So like, I think to some degree, like it would be, it's, it's useful, but I wish I could like go back whatever to when I was picking a major and just like study art history or something <laughs> and not like try to do like a vocational style of study. Cause really, you know, you can, yeah, you can, you can end up working in music, like just based on your like extracurricular interests. You know, I think that's, that's what my experience is at least. Yeah, for me, I, double majored in communications and then also philosophy because I just loved philosophy and for me philosophy was good to have just in like I'm good at writing I'm a good communicator that sort of thing but um other than that I mean as you guys probably know or at least when I went to UW there wasn't any music business classes and so my music business class was like would in WSUM. And so I think that is much, much more important. But if there are classes at UW now that are geared towards music industry, um, it's good to highlight the class on your resume. That's something that could definitely help you out. But other than that, if you're not, you know, majoring in music business, it probably, it doesn't matter as long as you have like 
you know, passion is huge. And also just, you know, some experience within music, that's really what's going to get you to where you want to be. Thank you very much. That <laughs> helps a lot. No problem. Any other I don't questions? think it hurts to have a background, though, in another degree. In my case, I don't mind the fact that I got a degree in the School of Business. I, I, I didn't use it, really. I didn't even like being in the School of Business when I was there. I think it's improved in a lot of ways since from what I can see of it. But, you know, there, there is something to be said for having eggs in various baskets, but still going all out for music. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if there are no other questions, like I was saying before, please, Kelsey, I don't know if our emails were shared in, in the, the invite for this, but reach out truly anytime. I'm happy to answer questions or if you're coming through New York or you want to just set up a call to chat one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, I'm always available, always happy to talk. Same. Yeah, please email me or add me on LinkedIn, anything. Yeah, I'm happy to connect those dots um, because I think most people on the call probably have my email address and not anybody else's. So I'm happy to connect those dots. Otherwise, find these folks on LinkedIn. They mean it when they say reach out. I know because I know most of you personally. So um, take them up on that. Um, we do have a few more minutes left. I know it can be kind of weird to sit in silence while waiting for a question, but let's, uh, let's see if anybody else in the room has some last minute thoughts to share or questions to ask before logging off. All right, it's okay to wrap up a little bit early as well. I want to uh, thank Bruce and Zach and Jesha for sharing their experiences and all of their insight into the industry, demystifying some things. I think this was helpful. Um, thank you all for being here as well. This is a, a really awesome turnout. It's um, kind of the first time we've tried uh, workshops like this, at least to my knowledge at, at WSUM. We've done you know different kind of training things, but. Um, yeah, it's really exciting to have station alumni come back and, and share, you know, what they've done with their WSUM experience out in the world and how you can do that too. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for being here. And I hope you all have a lovely evening. <laughs>